In a galaxy far away, a story unfolds of the Star Raiders whose Star Command battled it out with the Galaxy Empire. Wait, these aren't the toys you're looking for, or are they? Time to bring you up to light speed about these often rare and expensive knockoff Star Wars action figures. Today on Ed's Retro Geek Out, we take a look at the bootleg galaxy that Star Wars created, as it rose up like a phoenix, changing the toy industry forever and bringing second life to any old space toys that could be rebranded to cash in on the success. So be sure to subscribe for weekly toy videos and let's strap in for some toy history. On the 27th of October 1977, Star Wars was released in theaters. At the time, licensing movie toys wasn't a common thing, but after a $500,000 directing pay cut, George Lucas had gotten hold of all the licensing rights for Star Wars. Kind of a gamble, but in the end, I think it paid off big time for him. Even though he shopped the space western characters around to every toy manufacturer possible, most of them weren't biting. And even Kenner CEO Bernie Loomis, who eventually signed the deal with Lucas, didn't have fate in the movie, but saw the toyetic properties of the IP. Even if the movie didn't do well, it should have a life of its own. So they set out providing merchandise like t-shirts, masks, lunch boxes, and announcing Kenner's Star Wars toys to be out by Christmas. But they sold out immediately, leaving loads of kids unwrapping a certificate on Christmas morning. A promise they would get their very own toys when the factory finally caught up. The toy line stock was depleted as soon as it was released. Nobody would have guessed this to be such a huge success. And even though Kenner had some Star Wars worthy label slapping toys up their sleeve, two can play that game. The demand was so big that other space toys got more traction. Migos Micronauts was already a successful toy line, but all of a sudden, with the interest in space robots, these were flying off the shelves. Some companies did a check on what concepts they had lying around and they could easily alter to accommodate the demand, and Jedi Mind Trick you and your parents into getting. Star Team was Ideal's answer to Star Wars. After a deep dive in the archive, they decided to give some old toy concepts a 70s update. The line consisted of three figures and a spaceship. Zem-21 was a reimagining of Ideal's J.J. Arms body, giving that C-3PO vibe, but choosing not to go with his color. Knights of Darkness was just a Captain Action, with a Darth Vader inspired head and all the accessories that came with the Flash Gordon set. And Zeroid was just the same toy robot it was back in 1966. And oddly enough, he resembles R2-D2 quite a lot while predating him. In order to win the space race, Zeroid had the Starhawk space vessel, a starship with a cockpit dome to store Zeroid in with access to a computer panel, it had a landing gear sounds, and it could open up automatically. Star Team from Ideal, fantastic action figures that bring the future down to Earth today. Space heroes, menacing villains, lovable robots, and space vehicles that conquer the space system. Join the Star Team and let Ideal help you capture all the sellout demand created by the science fiction boom. It even had a free Marvel comic tie-in. Now you had Space Fighters by Imperial, who clearly saw a resemblance with the Stormtrooper in a couple of their products. So after a restyle logo in the pyramid style, we know from Star Wars, it definitely tried to connect itself to the popular toys. For only $1.29, one of these space fighters can be yours. Another existing toy line thrown together as a knockoff is Star Command's Staroid Raiders from 1978 Calfax Incorporated. With jointed movable arms, legs, and head, it came with a battle axe and a battle sword. It was made by the British company Tomland and they stood three and a quarter inch tall, five points of articulation. Yeah, they were designed to go with your real Star Wars toys. Even though none of the characters were imitating the Star Wars ones, Star Raiders on the other hand was Tomlin's 8 inch line and these were way more out there horror wise. Which is no surprise as they often used existing toys from the 60's monster craze to complete this line. Repackaged toys from previous toy lines like Monsters of Legend, they'd end up as a Star Raider or on a Star Command interplanetary Staroid action figure card. With just a card art changing to a Space War or Thunderbirds-like image. 
Any monster could be a space monster, and this one known as Flash probably resembles a Star Wars character the most. He hints to Chewbacca, but comes with clothes. And there's also Wick, who does resemble a Tusken Raider, but in blue and pink. With Zing, they tried to recreate a C-3PO looking character, but failed horribly. Then again, it's the worser these knockoffs get, the better. Maybe he just came from a galaxy really, really far away. The face art looks like it's been drawn on at the very last minute in the factory. In the end, these are just knockoff toys done right. But there's also a ton of bootlegs from existing molds, sometimes straight copies, and some with scaling issues. Issues. Quality was usually an issue, and most of the card art was a dead giveaway. There was a disturbance in the force. La Guerra de las Galaxias, an 80s Mexican bootleg, comes on a hand drawn piece of art. As you see, all your favorite characters come back on this bootleg art, and attached to it is a plastic baggie containing a fragile Luke Skywalker. Now, it wouldn't be complete without an accessory, and you're in luck. Depending on the version, you would get a red or blue colored Sword of Omen provided by Lino himself. Honestly, I just want this bootleg for the Thundercat sword. Right, R2-D2? Storing your bootlegs or original figures was easy. You could even get a knockoff figure case. The perfect case to store these collectibles, and who would have thought the knockoff case would become a collectible on its own? Like this, Star World figure case that could hold up to 12 space figurines, perhaps even a knockoff like the artwork shows. Droids, a Darth Vader-like character, and also Chewie and C-3PO get their very own representation on the artwork. For role-playing, lightsabers were the way to go, and next to Darth Vader's helmet, it was probably the most recognizable thing you could get to dress up as one of these characters. Battery-powered laser sword from 84 by Sunbeam Toys, with box art that could easily be mistaken for Star Wars. One with a Darth Vader-like character on the box and Luke-style figure that also glows in the dark after use. But once out the box, it was really more like a big plastic light-up stick with a black or blue handle. Or the Star Swords lightsabers, marketed by Skyline Incorporated as soft inflatable fun in 77. No lights were built in. These were just blow-up swords, so avoid contact with any sharp objects or hot surfaces. The lightsaber played a big role in the movies and was one of the easiest role-playing toys to bootleg. Anything was perfect for your outer space duels. From the Japanese stick bag to the space sword or mighty force weapon set. When Star Wars came out it was a worldwide phenomenon and so Palatoy would manufacture the toys for UK and some European markets. In different parts of the world you could get variations of the same toys and this was all thanks to these different manufacturers. But for some countries behind the Iron Curtain at the time, they could get their hands on the movie, but not on the toys. The import embargo and the international tensions caused toy makers in those countries to take matters in their own hands. That's how you got the Hungarian bootleg toys, Poland toys, Russia bootlegs, and often these with Frankenstein parts together from existing toys and throw some weird colors on them. But that's the beauty of it. And with all of these lines being produced after midnight in factories that often belonged to the communist government, you knew they were taking chances to get these toys out. And there's even Turkish bootlegs, Uze's Star Wars toys. Uze's Star Wars toys were manufactured by SB Product in the late 80s and are some of the best constructed bootlegs that definitely rivaled Kenner's quality. The card art, however, was not up to standard and has become famous like the Imperial Gunner manning the calculator for all your multiplying needs. It wouldn't hurt if we could multiply these bootlegs. They are so rare that some even fetch up to $80,000 if still on card. Like Headman with the golden head. Just like the movie, right? He also came with a sword and shield and is perfect for posing on the beach, as you can see on the card art. And even though these toys aren't based on the Turkish Star Wars movie, The Man Who Saved the World, the motion picture from 1982, which was also just stealing footage from the New Hope movie, heck, they even took parts from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Nothing was sacred when it came to popularity opportunists like this. So you see, not only in the toy aisles, there were aliens appearing everywhere. In the movie theaters, everyone was trying to create the next space adventure that would do well. Even B-movie king Roger Corman cashed in on the Star Wars craze with its own space opera in 1980 with Battle Beyond the Stars. Starring A-Team's Hannibal, yeah, George Papart taking on the Han Solo type role.
and later Corman would reuse that set for Space Raiders, as you might have guessed, also a Star Wars ripoff. There was a new story to be told in movies, and the universe full of tales was brought to the big screen hoping to score as big as the Death Star with the last Starfighter, Message from Space, Star Odyssey, Star Crash. I can keep going I could probably keep going on like this on TV you already had Star Trek and even though the Battlestar Galactica concept predated Star Wars it would alter certain things due to the Star Wars popularity seeing the obvious matches it even came to one of the many lawsuits George Lucas got himself into to protect his creation and with most of these bootlegs and knockoffs steering right on the edge of copyright infringement you know it was time for the Lucas Empire to sue back for Battlestar Galactica Galactica they sued in 1983 for the theft of their intellectual property but the key takeaway was that copyright doesn't protect ideas only the expression of ideas except for the basic concept that there was good and evil in space the court saw the idea being copied but the execution didn't have enough similarities when going after Ideal Star Team in 77, they learned trademark infringement requires more than a general association. It wasn't enough that people were reminded of Star Wars by Star Team. They would need to associate them as part of the movie, but the characters existed way before Star Wars was a thing. Sure, they did benefit from the success by also having these toys on the shelves. In 1983, Lucasfilm even went after President Ronald Reagan's Strategic Defense Initiative that got nicknamed Star Wars in the media. But the court ruled that trademark infringement must occur regarding competitive goods or services, which was not the case here. While in most cases, Lucasfilm lost in the end, they'd end up winning as Star Wars would last longer or outsell the other toy lines to the point of bankruptcy. But even in the 90s and beyond, they're still making bootlegs. Star Knight places Darth Vader on a police motorcycle in the mid 90s because why use the force when you have a set of wheels with blinking lights, real siren sound, mystery bump and go action, and there's more, gun shotting sound and voice plus real patrol motorcycle sound. Because you don't just walk around in the Death Star, that thing is huge, it would take too long. No, you cruise around on this bike when you're Darth Vader. There's something oddly satisfying seeing knockoffs like this one where the concept is so out of place that it just puts a smile on your face. Galaxy Combat 2 Return of Star Walker the special version with bomb sound effects and flashlight looking more like a Robocop knockoff but hey maybe it's both Star Tanks, the most powerful battle car all over the galaxy, would pull back action by Happy Toys Hong Kong and a very similar Galaxy Warriors logo Sun Gold? Four 5 inch long Star Tanks were released like Mighty Cannon, Airland Destroyer, Super Laser Killer and Speed Rescuer. Apart from the Star Wars font, they really don't have a lot to do with Star Wars. Best Toy Galaxy Warrior were G.I. Joe like knockoffs but they might as well have been Centurions or Star Trek knockoffs. The 90's knockoff line Star Attack gave you two minifigures and three mini spaceships. The card art is clearly ripped from Star Wars and the vehicles look a lot like Thunderbirds vehicles. The aliens came however from the Outer Space Men action figures, a line from 1968 whose molds have been reused over and over again for knockoff toys. They were originally produced by the Color Forms company. You do have to give props to the knockoff manufacturer to tie both the aliens and the vehicles nicely together by the paint scheme. Then you add Galaxy Empire. These Power of the Force knockoffs from the 90s came with twistable head, waist, and movable arms and legs, but also an accessory like a big blaster or in Darth Vader's case a lightsaber. Most of them looked the part but some liberty was taken color wise, like for Chewbacca with the grey fur or this stormtrooper that clearly moonlights as a doctor after hours. Yeah those blue gloves gave it away Buster. And sure yeah, there's also episode 1 bootlegs. When they came to the store almost as fast as the real deal with the usual off colors and funny names like Dark Maul who got nicknamed Dennis the Phantom Menace or who would forget Toby One, Emperor Daft Sirius, R2 3PO, these figures were supposed to talk but the communication tech chip wasn't installed and the paint schemes also didn't match up with the real deal. But honestly from afar these could have easily been mistaken to have been part of the movie's actual toy line. It was a real attack of the clones. What indeed? 
What indeed. Now the knockoff known as Universal War looks awesome. These were stormtroopers, aliens, and a Darth Vader with big guns and disproportioned heads. I love this stuff. And sure, all the toys mentioned in this video are merely a speck in the black hole consumers can get their bootlegs fixed from. This isn't even the tip of the iceberg, and with the Star Wars Cinematic Universe ever expanding, it doesn't seem like this will end very soon. Star Wars toys did something not a lot of toy lines did before them change the whole industry. So I do have a follow-up video in the works to see how Kenner's competitors were reacting to their success. Knowing that most of these competitor toy companies got offered the license before Kenner, but they passed on it. So there's definitely some regret, but that's for another video. Be sure to leave all the best and worst bootlegs you've ever seen in the comments down below. And also let me know if you were to make a Star Wars knockoff toy line, what would the name be? Please leave a like and subscribe for more 80s and 90s toy content weekly. A big shout out to all my supporters on Patreon and you for watching. You can also follow me on Instagram and all of my other socials. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.